Hey everyone, this is Peter and this week I'll be showing you how to create a leather texture. So specifically we'll be tackling a base leather texture and then seeing what we can do to turn that into like a sofa texture or upholstery. So first things first, we'll go file new, create a square document, 2048 by 2048, and fill it with a brown color, a dark brown. And I know what you might be thinking, that uh, the cover photo for this video is actually uh, a white leather. But we're actually going to start type. Um, we're going to start off with this um, brown because that's the the natural color of leather, and I'll show you how to adjust it to make it whatever color you want. Um, the first thing that I want you to do though is distress the surface, and we're going to use these uh, lighter brown colors and just kind of create some raised areas, um, add some texture to it because uh, that's going to prevent it from looking very flat. Um, it's going to give it more of a painterly feel. And just look at some uh, some images of leather, for example, and we'll see there's sort of, um, it's almost a scaly feeling to it. It, it looks like uh, there's these little raised bumps, so that's what we're going to want to create here. So once you've laid down some of these colors, then what I want you to do is take a slightly darker brown and paint in some faint cracks. So we're going to try and emulate what we're seeing in these uh, reference photos. So think of, uh, you can go back to like the cobblestone uh, or even some of the metal tutorial uh, that I was doing earlier and kind of take some reference from that. But we'd we'll pick uh, a brighter brown, hit some highlights, and then we'll just offset it. So filter other offset and then fix those seams, blend those seams together 
And from here, um, you see it's like things are pretty messy right now, aren't they? They're um, they're very soft. There's there's not a lot of defined detail. So once we've uh, repeated the filter and gone back to the original um, position, now we want to start adding uh, some of those harder lines and try and get the the texture to really pop here. So we don't want to make it too contrasted because these raised areas, if you'll, if you'll look at some photos, they're not actually very elevated. There isn't that um, that big depth uh, in the cracks like like we would see in a stone or like we, we would see in dented metal. This is just slightly slightly cracked areas from where the leather is flexing. So now um, after this you'll see me starting to refine these edges. So uh, this whole thing has really been done so far with a hard brush but right now we're really zooming in and we're we're hitting some of those uh, those lines so they don't feel so blurry because that's just gonna make our um, our tiling texture look uh, low resolution and I'll show you why in a, a minute here but we're, we're just going through here and we're hitting with the highlights again and we're uh, using the darker color to paint in uh, the shadowed area so almost treating these almost like they're stones or scales right now um, and then what we're going to do in this uh, tutorial is tile it over and over again. So we've got it, um, we're using it as a, uh, a very zoomed out texture, unlike the other tutorials. So then uh, we'll go through those steps of edit define pattern to uh, create the pattern in Photoshop, and then go to uh, fill uh, or new fill layer pattern, and then there you have our uh, the zoomed out version of our, our leather. So this is like, it's pretty uniform. You can kind of tell where it's tiling. So what I want you to do is select the layer mask filter and render the clouds. So that'll uh, make it kind of come through spotty. It'll make it transparent in certain areas. And if you repeat that again, so if we have two layers where it's tiling, um, Maybe one is on a scale of 20 or something, and another one's on a scale of 10. Then you can repeat the cloud filter with this other layer, uh, set it to a different tiling mount, and then we're going to get um, something that doesn't feel like it is repeating as much, uh, just because there there is that difference. And since both of them are um, scaled, they should tile just fine. So. Now we want to merge all our layers and just perform some general uh, adjustments because right now this is our base leather. So if you want to uh, keep it like this, you're welcome to. Um, you could use that for like a medieval leather or something, I don't know. But um, right now I'm changing it to um, this uh, manufactured like sofa leather. So um, I want you to adjust it so it's got all the saturation out of it it's it's blackish um, and it's got it's got to get worse before it gets better right so we're going to um, find the center here and I'm going to add a button so finding the middle of the canvas um, I just drew an X through it it's it's nothing I'm sure there's a better way to do it with like guidelines or something but I just drew an X on a different layer and um, to create the button, uh, do a circle selection and fill it with um, the pattern that you've made. And once you've got that circle, then use the dodge and burn tool to create these highlights and uh, shadows. So that's that's going to really make it feel 3D. And you just get all the edges with the, the burn tool and then make that highlight in the upper left. And uh, you can see me not really satisfied with that so I kind of undid some things and fixed some things up but once you're happy with it then you would want to go to uh, filter distort and spherize it's gonna make it feel even more circular so it'll make our our texture kind of warp around um, and now uh, the upholstery has the stitching in it so we want to add seams with the dodge and burn tool 
So those will go straight through the center. And uh, you've got shadows next to the highlights, next to another shadow. And now you can uh, take the same burn tool that we had. Oh, well first we'll, we'll copy the button. So this will allow um, your buttons to be tileable. So your buttons are on a different layer. So copy your button, offset the button layer, and paste it in the middle. And now we can even, uh, with, this, uh, with the seam layer, uh, we can spherize that. And that'll give it more of a, uh, a curved feeling to the, the base texture itself. So uh, what I have this set to is, I think, vertical only and um, within the spherize tool. So then I just kind of make it um, indented here with uh, the burn tool, and then I burn some uh, indents in there. Now, um, after you've burned these indents, you want to make sure you've got equal highlights. So you uh, would take the dodge tool and hit everywhere that would be raised. So alongside the um, each of your indents alongside your seams and here I'm just making sure that the, the button feels like it's actually sitting in that uh, indent and what you just saw there was I was, I was really trying to uh, I was trying to use a burn tool with too high of an exposure so um, you've kind of got to play with that tool if you have it set to 100% it's just gonna come out black um, so play around with the range and turning down the exposure by a lot um, but once you find something that's hap you're happy with and doesn't um, completely blow out your details on that tiling texture underneath then you'll be good so I was playing around a lot with um, the the tiling and seeing what it looked like zoomed out and you want to make sure that your button layer when you go to tile your button layer and your seam layer is merged because otherwise uh, one will tile without the other and I realized when I went to tile it that the button is um, or not the button sorry yeah actually the the button is too dark and it's um, it's standing out too much so it, it just looks like a bunch of spots so uh, in order to balance that I wanted to introduce some more uh, light to the scene to make it at least feel like it fit together now one of the problems I'm having here, you see those harsh edges, that's because I painted with uh, the dodge tool along the edges of the texture, and you don't want to do that, that's a big no-no. Um, that's just going to create those harsh edges and make it a lot harder to fix. So if you notice me rename that to upholstery, um, that's one of the words you can Google if you're looking for reference images. Uh, look for uphol leather upholstery or uh, Chesterfield sofa, because that's the, the type of sofa style that you would normally see this uh, type of backing on. So um, now from there I am just trying to figure out what color I want this and you can do multiple different things with like uh, color and hue uh, blending modes so you can make it brown again if you wanted you could make it purple if you have want a purple leather sofa but I decided to go with a white sofa so here I'm just making uh, more intense highlights with the dodge tool and um, to, to make that pop a little bit more. And from here, uh, I found the image adjustment layer that worked better, uh, or the image adjustment that worked better uh, this time was not brightness contrast, it was actually uh, levels. So that's something you've just got to play around with. Um, and if you go to, uh, when you go to tile it, make sure you merge all your layers, so your buttons and your um, your seam layer is all one piece and then you want to go edit find pattern and layer fill layer so um, for this uh, adjust the levels so the middle sliders to the far left um, which will knock down the darkness so there's your leather upholstery texture and let me know what you thought in the comments below see you next week